All right, everybody, we're back with a brand new Cabral concept. This is episode 3141 of the show. If you want to know all the details on how to assess low versus high thyroid activity or dysfunction, I'm going to explain it today, and I'm also going to share with you a self-assessment-based quiz, a little bit like yesterday where we went over top 10 signs of low magnesium. If you have that or you even thinking about you may have low magnesium, keep in mind, in our practice, we run the minerals and metals test. We found that 80% of people have a functionally low level of magnesium. They're just not getting enough from their food. Simple, easy, obviously, to fix. I want to do the same today for thyroid. This one's going to be a little bit more, it's not complicated, but it's a little bit more intricate. So I want to share that with you today. First, we're going to go through signs of hyperthyroidism. And I want you to think of that as a little... Uh, um, analogy, or I want you to think of it as at least analogous to the words high and hot. All right, keep that in mind as I take you through them. And then as we go through hypothyroidism, I want you to think of low, slow, and cold. All right, so I want you to think about that as we're going through. Let's go over hyperthyroidism right now. This is important, but less than. So in our practice, we run a lab uh, different from yesterday's for magnesium. This one's called the stress moon and metabolism test. It's an amazing lab that takes you through your um, sex hormones, such as estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, cortisol throughout the day, all four times throughout the day, takes you through your thyroid in depth, not just TPO or TSH, but actually free T4, and free T3. So amazing test. And then it looks at vitamin D and also uh, insulin, hemoglobin, A1C. But the reason why I bring that up is that we've run that lab now with well over 10,000 people. I mean, tens of thousands of people, it has to be. And what we find is that the majority of people, if there is a thyroid dysfunction, it is usually hypo, which means low. It's usually low thyroid, not hyper thyroidism. Hyperthyroidism uh, affects a very small percentage of the population. That doesn't mean, though, that they don't deserve care, but it's a much smaller percentage of the population. Unlike low thyroid, where it affects one in five women. So basically, you're walking down the street, one in five women you see are going to be affected by low thyroid. Men, it's about one in eight to ten. So as men get older, above their typically mid to later 30s, it's one in, let's say, 10. So about double what it is for women. Now, it's still, it's one out of 10 walk, men walking down the street. So this is very important for both men and women. I'm going to end with the low thyroid, the hyper hypothyroid. And the, and the reason is just the majority of people, if there's a thyroid dysfunction, which again, one in five, uh, they're going to want to know more about this. So it is opposites. That's what I want you to think about. Hyper versus hypo. So let's take it from head all the way down to the toes. So first and foremost, if you have hyperthyroidism, you are far more likely to have hair loss, whether you're a man or a woman. Okay, man or a woman, hyperthyroidism, hair loss. The next, the eyes are going to be typically bulging more. They're going to look like they're coming out of the head to a larger degree. Now, again, we're talking about percentages, right? 10, 20%, maybe up to 30% more than normal. The eyes seem a little bit bulgy. The next part is this, is that there is a faster heart rate. So when we talk about the opposite, hypothyroidism, which is that low metabolism, we'll go back and forth in just a moment. It's different hyperthyroidism, everything is high, right? It's faster. So it's a faster heartbeat. The body is under more stress, oftentimes producing too much thyroid or too much cortisol and or cortisol as well. Unlike the low, there's actually weight loss. Why? Hyper, hyper, right? Fast metabolism. Instead of constipation, there's loose stool. So oftentimes, people with hyperthyroidism have diarrhea. If this is starting to sound like you, you may be an individual that's unfortunately suffering from hyperthyroidism. You can know for sure if you take the stress, mood, and metabolism test. We'll link that up for you here today. Anybody can run it right at home in the privacy, right at home in the privacy of your own home, not sharing results with anybody else, not your insurance, not your doctor, not anybody, just the lab company, your equal life coach, and you. That's episode 3141. You can head to stephencabral.com slash 3141. Okay. For women specifically, this can lead also to 
less menstrual cycles, so missing the menstrual cycles or potentially longer cycles. And part of the reason is many women, um, unfortunately, move into more of a state of amenorrhea where they lose their cycle. One, weight loss. Two, higher levels of stress, which is not great for women getting their period. Um, and that extra production of thyroid really could throw things off. So the last one that I wanted to share with you as well is that usually there's a heat intolerance, kind of that pitta intolerance. The heat makes people with hyperthyroidism more uncomfortable. Now, you don't have to have hyperthyroidism to be experiencing more of those pitta-based imbalances and not love the heat, right? So I'm not saying that at all. Some people run a little bit hotter, more of that pitta, but for people with hyperthyroidism, they absolutely can run a little more hot. All right, now let's move over to the hypothyroidism and let's juxtapose the two. So if hyperthyroidism is high and hot, hypothyroidism is slow, low, and cold. All right, so here we go. Dry hair. Now that dry hair can become more brittle, but it can also lead to hair loss as well. Different from that high metabolism versus and the high thyroid and cortisol output, whereas hypothyroidism, there's poor circulation to the head. It's also why there can be cold hands and cold feet. So it's not just a um, thyroid alone, it's what else is happening, poor circulation. Thyroid is the metabolism or the thermostat of the body. So nutrients, uh, all of those things, just overall, it is much slower. Instead of the more bulging eyes, it can be a puffier face. You can look like you're holding a little bit more water over the whole body, but that affects the face as well. Both high and low thyroid can oftentimes cause swelling right around the Adam's apple or right below, so a little lower on your neck. And this is often referred to as a goiter. Now, not everyone who has high or low thyroid gets a goiter. I would actually say that it's the minority of individuals who gets one. However, the inflammation of that thyroid or nodules can actually cause a swelling of that area, often referred to as a goiter. All right, hypothyroidism, again, one in five women, one out of 10 men, Instead of a fast heartbeat, it can often be a slower heartbeat because of a slower and lower metabolism. Now, it doesn't always translate, right? Because someone in great cardiovascular shape can have a low heart rate. So I'm not saying that at all. This is a different story. This is a lowered metabolism. That's why there's that cold hands and feet, poor circulation, uh, sometimes even weak digestion can be another big one. And that's why for low thyroid, you can actually lead to more drier. So I could say low and slow uh, and cold, but I could also say dry. And that's a big one uh, with hypothyroidism, could be constipation. So that constipation can lead to bloating uh, for sure and all sorts of digestive issues because that slow bowel metabolism as well, that's that peristaltic movement, moving stool uh, through the intestines, 25, 26 feet of intestines, right? Uh, or digestive tract as we eat. All right, instead of weight loss, it is typically weight gain. And oftentimes, it's not just body fat. You can actually retain more water. You can feel more puffy, more swollen. If that sounds like you, very likely, very likely that there could be a low thyroid issue. Now, um, just like we talked about with women and uh, potential issues with their menstrual cycle with hyperthyroidism, there is the same with same infertility and menstrual issues with low thyroid as well. Sometimes it's more difficult to actually become pregnant, one hypothyroid. Uh, sometimes there are issues with miscarriages. I'm not saying that's going to happen to anyone, but it's important to look at that, just be aware of it, and of course, improve your thyroid. What I want you to also understand is that there is a very large range of acceptability in conventional medicine. It is a TSH, which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone, which is not thyroid hormone, but it's thyroid stimulating hormone that then leads to T4 and T activated T3. And that ranges between 0.5 and 5. However, anything above a 2 to a 2.5 is suboptimal. So if you run the stress mood and metabolism test, or you've ever run your TSH, and you see it at 3.5, Typically, your medical doctor or endocrinologist will say, everything looks good, but that is not optimal. So you could be suffering then from the dry hair, the hair loss, the thinning of the outside of the eyebrow, the puffy face, the weight gain, the slow digestion, the constipation, cold hands and feet, 
uh, dry skin, which I didn't even mention. Uh, hyperthyroidism could be more oily skin and, or menstrual based issues. So this is important to really look at that. And, and as I said before, one out of five women and one out of 10 men will have these low thyroid, functionally low based issues where very small percentage will have the hyperthyroid, but it's still important to be aware of that. Hyperthyroidism will have a measurement not between 0.5 and 2, which is optimal. Theirs will be less than 0.5 for a TSH typically. So both can be assessed by running thyroid stimulating hormone, but TSH alone is not going to give you the full story. You actually want to look at, well, why would my TSH be above a 2 or 2.5 or below a 0.5? And then you want to look at your adrenals with your cortisol levels. Your DHEA, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen will give you a good indicator. Your vitamin D levels and even things like your gut health, etc. So my recommendation is to run the stress mood and metabolism test if you believe there's an issue so that you just don't use something like a daily thyroid support, although it's a great nutritional supplement and it works amazingly well for individuals that are short on the nutrients that their thyroid needs that may lead to then hypothyroidism, I actually like to get to the underlying root cause always and forever. That's the goal, right? And so what I want to do is link that up for you. A direct link is stephencabral.com slash hormones dash test. But you can also go to stephencabral.com slash 3141 to be able to take this simple at-home lab test. You get the results back within three weeks and it's kept completely private. And best of all, it also comes with a coaching call to review your lab results with a personalized plan. Either way, I hope that this show was helpful for you, that you learned a little bit about low thyroid versus hyper or high thyroid, what the different symptoms are. And of course, if there's any ever any questions, always do let us know. If the show was helpful, do feel free to share it as well with anyone you believe could serve. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new Cabral Concept. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.